Hello and welcome to Let's Have a Conversation. Uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting conversation tonight. Um, I'm your host, Colin Campbell, and Let's Have a Conversation is brought to you by A Few Good Men, and it gives us an opportunity to have conversations that matter to our generation. Now, I want to get, um, before I get straight into introducing our two guests that we have on the platform, I would like you everyone to take the opportunity to share the live guys share the live like um, and share tag someone um, this is let's have a conversation on a few good men uh, every Friday you, t you can tune in um, to get um, interesting conversations and dialogues with you know people and uh, it's always going to be a fun time here on our platform all right so let's get straight into introducing our guests but before we do that Tonight's topic is for the love of dance. Now, working a nine to five at a dead end job will no longer cut it. Well, at least not at le well at least not for our next guest, uh, Wendell um, Bullen, aka King Kayak, and Shanika Gibbs, both internationally recognized professional dancers, have shown that their passion can become their career. Both have turned away from a traditional career path in pursuit of their dreams of becoming professional dancers. But that choice did not come without its challenges. Uh, tonight, guys, uh, we have invited both dancers to let's have a conversation about the dance industry in an episode we like to call For the Love of Dance. So let's take the opportunity to welcome um, our guests to the platform. Uh, King Kaya, how are you, my brother? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. Thank you oh. so much again for, for having me um, a part of this, this conversation. Definitely an honor. Always, always a pleasure to to reconnect and definitely connect with um, everyone in, in, in Grenada and the world, specifically in Grenada. <laughs> hey, you got to put that in there. <laughs> yeah, because you know we got like, people you know, like we, we out here, you know. That's right. And uh, let's bring in our next guest uh, to the platform. Hello, how are you? Hi. Hi. Hey. Ah, fresh from <laughs> Dubai. <laughs> yes. <sir. laughs> All right, guys. Wonderful. Um, I just would like uh, to you to take the opportunity to introduce yourself. Um, and Wendell, you'll get the opportunity after, because ladies first. Go okay. right ahead. <laughs> so tell um, us about yourself. Yes. Well, as most people know, I'm Shanika. Come from a small village called Syracuse. Started my dance training like around the age of four with Spiceland dancers. Eventually. I transitioned into the Conception Dance Theater under the leadership of Cecilia Griffith. Um, some dance bug bit me, took me to Jamaica. The rest is history. I am now a postgraduate student in Scotland and currently touring the world, doing what I love, as you say. Wow, wow, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, shots fired. Eh? Hey, so Wendell, let me uh, introduce yourself. I mean, you. I mean, come on. We. You don't. I know the two of you don't have to, but just for conversational sake. <coughs> well, my name is Wendell Bullen. Now I go by the name. Uh, my artist name King Kayak. Um, so I was born and raised in Hillsborough, Caribou. Um, I did. And hmm, I was always a freestyle dancer, growing up, but. Um, I was blessed to, to move to the U.S. when I was like around, um, let's say, 14. And then I, I, I was able to just, you know, see how everything is in the U.S. And um, dancing is just something I was always interested in. Even if I didn't um, get the chance to, to take classes or anything like that, it's just something that I was just eager to learn. So I would go on online, watch videos, and learn as much as I could. And um, when at the age of 18, I got the chance to get into a free a free dance program here it's called the the, the 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 place is called the door so they offered resources for for teens and um in in different fields whether it's for helping them find finding jobs uh legal services dance uh music and, and so forth so um because I, I didn't at the time i really really wanted to, to just learn as much as i could because i love watching dance on tv so as soon as I started, I just stuck with it, and ever since then, um, yeah, dance has, has has done a lot for me. Dance has definitely changed my life uh, for the better. Mm -hmm. It continues to change my life, and yeah, it's a blessing. Okay, 
All right. So while you're at it, though, um, prior to, you know, knowing that you wanted to become, all right, first of all, let me ask you, you always knew that you wanted to be a dancer or you had a different career path in mind? Um, well, I just, I wanted to become a dancer when I, I say from the sixth grade, because around that time, like I would always dance, I always bust a wine here and there, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 um, oh, that's stand up for Grenada. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's, 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 <laughs> But um, I, I when I when I was younger, I would watch a lot of uh, BET videos when my brothers would have it on. Yeah, and that's where I really started um, seeing seeing more dancing um, from like Usher videos and and uh, other artists. But when I went to GBSS, I saw more freestyle dancers, and I was like, all right, this is something that I want to learn. But I didn't really know what what path to, to take, you know, towards that. So. When I had the chance to, to get on the computer and go on YouTube, then I was just like searching for everything I could find and whatever I could try, I try. And because um, th they were like one or two dancers back in Caracol, but it's not like they were teaching or anything. They were freestylers. I was too young to go to the club to see where they dance and dance. So I didn't really have like that much like face to face influence. Okay. You know? So from the time when I went to GBSS and you have like the, the, the drum pole playing and you see the guys jump out and freestyling, I was like, yo. <laughs> That's what you want to do. Yeah. All right. Shanika, I want to bring into this conversation. Um, prior to, you know, knowing that you wanted to become a dancer, um, you had a different career path in mind or is, what, what, what's it like for you? For me, yeah. prior to the idea of dance as a career, there was a sense that um, a career in something more reputable like science or law was more accepting and fitting around, let's say, my peers and my family and just the, the, the natural culture of the island. Um, with the education that I received, the support, the experience I was gaining, and where I was placing myself, a career in physical therapy actually was what seemed attainable. It had financial security, it was valued, and overall, I do have a love for the sciences. Okay. So that's where I was headed, far, <laughs> far away from dance. <laughs> oh gosh, well, what what happened? What happened? Um, Honestly speaking, I ask myself that question all the time. I ask my, myself the why, the how, but then I'm comforted with the fact that nothing before it's time. So when I say a dance bug bit me, it bit me. Even uh, when things don't yeah. feel okay, yeah. when I dance, it feels okay. Mm. When, I, when I'm holistically devoted to the process of dance and learning choreography and performing, one plus one just equals to two all the time. There's no going around that. Okay. So it's like a dance is now your physiotherapist. <laughs> right. So that's what it is. All right. You know, funny enough, right? I speak to a lot of young people. And um, because of the way, you know, society is structured here in Grenada, um, you're forced into a particular career path because you're thinking, oh, you need to get a job and you need to have a steady salary. And so a lot of young people, especially with the advent of social media, are they actually want to pursue things that make them happy. They want to get up every day and say, you know what? I want to go to work because it makes me happy. And, and I'm actually pursuing something that is within you know, my talent. That's, that's what, if your talent is dance, you would, you want to get paid for it, right? Yeah. Exactly. So I get a lot of that, but because of the way the society is structured, um, I know it's a bit rigid um, and a lot of people are, you know, the young people are stifled. Um, I want to get from you, Wendell and um, Shanika, what was it like growing up and how did that shape you know your 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 vision for your career as of now yeah so um who, who want to take that first think who is it? i see <laughs> when are you thinking all right shinika i think you you probably look like you <laughs> um i would say that grenada is the reason i am who i am today okay if i was not that little girl from syracuse I probably would not be here growing up in a rural village with simple parents who just wanted me to get the best out of life and everything it had to offer. And then the addition of that environment and their support that sort of impacted me and guided me. Um, as I matured with my experiences, educationally, it, it, it also impacted me because I can remember specifically hearing the, the, the words being well-rounded, uttered as a constant reminder in the walls of convents and Georges. Uh, it's something they would preach to us all the time. Now, 
those school lessons that I had happened in Grenada and it stayed with me. And I remember being involved in things like other things like lawn tennis and track and field. And I was even in the folk choir and getting to, you know, have the experiences of the arts festival and just partaking in independent celebrations while still having to push academia, of course. Um, little did I know that these were my first steps in the whole thing of discipline and time management, my leadership skills, my ability to endure. So I'd say Grenada really helped me begin creating a balance in my life that guides me now for dance. Yeah. Mm, wow, wow. Mm. Okay, wow, that's interesting. Uh, Wendell, uh, what, what was it like for you? <laughs> well, I definitely second that with, with, with Shanika. Um, I think, how, well, how I grew up around a lot of business because my, my dad, my family, they have a couple of businesses. So I, I grew up you know, working with you know, the businesses and stuff like that. Just pretty much learning everything around. But um, with the primary school I used to go to, they would always have shows. So it's I think it stemmed from there. Like when they would have the little shows, I would try to, you know, go either sing or dance or something. And as I got older, I did uh, one or two talent shows um, in Karaku. And around that time, I was getting like a good response. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, when I when I when I'm older, I want to become an entertainer, and that's that's the only thing that was in my mind. Entertainer, it wasn't necessarily just dance by itself, but dance was so second nature that it became the thing that I was just um, constantly interested in, mm -hmm. or, or or constantly pr pursuing. I would say, and um, like just like Shanika, I would I was in sports. I was doing track and field. I was playing soccer. I was playing. You know, I was I was playing basketball. I was boxing a little bit. Um, <clears throat> definitely, I, I, I was just the person that was eager to learn anything new because it wasn't yeah. really, like my, 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 my dad, well, I was, I was with my dad most of the time, but he, he didn't try to limit what I, what I would do. So I kind of just had my own way in a sense. So because dance made me so happy, I was just like, Hey, like, this is what I'm going to do. Apart from everything else that I learned, dance is really what stuck to me. And, you know, I'm still kind of in that phase now. I, I just love learning. Mm -hmm. um, definitely being, being in Grenada and trying so many different things, that definitely helped. That you definitely know. helped. Um, I, wanted, I want to get a, a clearer picture because I know definitely for Shanika, um, you defied um, <laughs> your parents' expectation just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So speak to us about that. Um, and, you know, what would, were there any challenges and what was that like um yes it was challenging in the beginning because you know trying to convince them that this way i know proposing is going to be sustainable that's that was the biggest challenge that's the question but despite that um like i told you earlier i don't know why i <laughs> Um, I'm still trying to find my why that I keep pushing, but I can't put my finger on it. But I know, like I tell you, once I'm in it, I'm in it. And I remember specifically having moments where I didn't even want to go back to dancing anymore because uh, it got hard. I mean, some people hard. just see as some people see as just okay. I'm on a stage performing, and that's that. But the the back to the dance and the performance is is a lot of work and i guess growing up i was experiencing things i was in a a place where i guess growing up allowed me to, to question myself and whether i was enough or my ability was enough and along the journey i was told some not so nice things that well i now hold it to me as fuel to my fire um i know my parents would always support me because i mean i'm the only child so <laughs> <laughs> yeah but okay that risk i was willing to take i i'm not sure i i swear there were times when they thought i was mad because it's oh, like yeah. how is it she's doing that i remember a story specifically um there was this i started bali for the first time and sadly our caribbean bodies are not 
suited for that. So we have to go through a lot of rigor in order to conform. And it was my first time being introduced to certain terminologies that they were using. And I didn't know what it was to turn out or to develop a leg. I barely had extensions or to do a pirouette. So I, after that class, I came home bawling to my mom and I said, yeah, I am not going to do this anymore because one, this can't sustain me. Two, I'm not good at it, so I'm just going to stop. She told me the next day, I packed my bags and she asked me where I was going. And she, I said, I'm going to dancing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, like I said, I don't know what it is. Right. I don't know why it is. I mean, I feel like dance was given to me. Mm. You know, when you, when, you, when you think that you're living your purpose, yeah, is that. Mm. When I tell you it makes me feel okay, even when things are not okay. Yeah, it's just oh. one of those things. And them seeing that, no, they can do nothing but support me because they see the joy and they feel the joy. Mm, and they see the results. <laughs> right, that too. Yeah, because, you know, people tend to think that, especially in Grenada, traditional careers are the doctor, the lawyers, the nurse, you know, and, and the list goes on. Um, but if you're talking about being a dancer, hmm, 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 how are you paying the bills with that one? <laughs> yeah. Um, King Kaya, could you relate to what she's saying um, and, and what was your experience? Define the odds. <clears throat> Well, expectations yeah now, now that i think about it I, I think my my family probably expected me to, to jump more into sports because of my 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 older sibling because they were always the sports and you know sports is so big in in, in Grenada. so um as far as um non-traditional career paths right i think that's that's always expected if you, either you do the doctor lawyer or whatever or you do track and field and try to be your best at that or something but that wasn't necessarily my my love so um i was always shy growing up definitely super shy but okay. i i was always that guy like even if i know i'll be scared to do it, to do whatever it is i would just talk myself into doing it so that's kind of how i ended up doing like some of the shows and everything like that but i think it was um I mean, my, my, my parents never tried to stop me from doing it because I don't even think they, they necessarily had that much time to really see what I was doing. But um, from the time when they, when I think after I did a couple of shows and I would get like good re remarks and good reviews, I think um, after a while, they kind of pay attention a little bit more. And um, yeah, but they, I, I guess I haven't really shared as much of that, you know, that journey with them. They just know, like, okay, they see me dancing a little bit, and then now I'm where I'm at right now, right? <laughs> um, like, like Shanika said, like, dancing definitely made me feel like so much better with everything that I did. You know, if you if, if you would see me walking on the street and I have music or anything, you would see me dancing a little bit. You know, just mm -hmm. me busting out a little bit because everything was just freestyle for me. You know, so um, I didn't have anybody training me. It was just like, hey, let me just try a thing, and then. When I do it, people like it. So I'm like, hey, let me, let me, let me continue, let me continue. <laughs> and I think the first, the first thing I, I tried learning on my own was some break dancing, and it was from YouTube. And then when I tried it, I was like, oh, I got it. And the time I, after I got that, then I was just like, I was stuck. Like you know when you know, back in the days when they had the computer cafes. Oh come on, man! Yeah, man. I save my last dollar, two dollars to go there for sit, sit down for like an hour or two and just watch dance videos all day. Wow. Yeah. Passion. Yeah. Passion, man. That's passion. It, it, it started for me, you know. Okay. And but but academics was was definitely big because with with my parents because that was the most important thing for them. Like make sure you you get your, your good grades. I think because I was doing well in school, I don't mm. think that they worried too much about what I did on, on the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to get an understanding of the challenges, all right? Because, um, and we'll we'll get to the successes. Uh, I just like to touch on the challenges because I know that uh, it's an industry that is huge. It's probably a billion dollar industry, um, but to get in is a problem. Like the fashion industry and other industries, the, to get in and to get a foot is a problem. So, Shalika, um, from you. Could you highlight some of the challenges you've experienced while on that journey to become who you are today? Um, I think that question is so interesting, but I mean, interesting may not be the best word. Oh boy. Um, Pick like, one or two or three, yeah. Um, 
I feel like in every every career that you approach, there there's a challenge. So for a lawyer, there's a challenge. For a doctor, there's a challenge. For a surgeon, there's a challenge. Um, in terms of dance, the challenges take on or takes a toll on your holistic self. So mm. physically, I know for me, I and I know some people when I say this, they may you know, say contrary, but I didn't fit the mold of what a dancer looked like. What does that mean? The um, mold. Right. So I am shorter than the rest. I was more sized than the rest back then. And typically dance has a particular aesthetic. Now with that aesthetic, there are certain expectations. So they expect higher extensions, you know, more revolutions in turns. Um, the expectant or the expectance was to be technically clean and technically trained. And I wasn't that. Um, just like Wendell, I just had fire and passion, loads fire. of it. <laughs> and blah, 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 blah. yeah, so physically <laughs> that was challenge number one. Right. Mentally was, you know, accepting that challenge number one is challenge number one and not doing the thing where you compare yourself to another person's journey. Cause when I went to Jamaica, I was now with people who fit that mold. Yeah. I was with people who they, they, they had what's called dancer's body. So here I, I had to coach myself into not thinking, oh, this person is better than me or, or, or you know, I'm not going to make it. And as much as that affected my mental, emotionally, that um, there was some effect on that too. You know, trying not to be your biggest enemy when the world already is your biggest enemy. So mm -hmm. I'd say overall, those are those are my main challenges. But I think that the, the crown on the head was the financial support. Speak to me about that. And um, in my journey, I mean, a very long one. I feel like I can write a book. Very my sure. parents basically, <laughs> I should write. Um. Yeah, nobody was willing to support what seemed to be that far-fetched dream. So even though I seeked many scholarships, spoke to many people trying to reach out to other Grenadians who were already out there doing what I was aspiring to do just for like advice or relatability, I never got that. My parents basically had to do it on their own. And like I said in the beginning, life throws some serious curveballs. So it wasn't as simple as I am verbalizing here, um, sometimes having finances dangle in front of you almost made the dream unachievable. So it had nothing to do with, oh, because I'm passionate anymore. I would stay passionate and I'd stay hungry, but it then came down to this thing that people are not even supporting. It's so expensive just to train and you know benefit from it. And I'm not able to do so. So I've had a physical challenge, a mental challenge, an emotional challenge, but financially, that was the one. But like I said, big up to my parents, because honestly, yeah. I, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't wow. be doing half of the things without them. So, wow. yeah. Yeah. Look, I know your mom. I don't know your dad, but I, I assume he's also a, a really good guy. But um, trust yes. me, your mom, big up to her, man. I really love her. her. I really love her for that. Um, so King Kayak, tell me about you and some of the challenges that you've experienced. Now we'll get to the success <laughs> like I can't wait to touch on that one, but let's talk about the challenge. I think the challenge more for me, it wasn't it wasn't as as physical because um I was I was I was so hungry to the point where I was just like, yo, you know what, I just want to just learn whatever it is I could learn. But like, even down to doing gymnastics and everything like all of these things were self-taught. Like I watched somebody do it, and then I tried to, to to do it, you know. But I think my biggest my biggest challenge was was mental, because I felt like for many years on this this journey of becoming the, the, this this dancer was it was a, a lonely one, because um, a lot of the people that I was around I couldn't really relate relate to them, in, you know, because there were friends that that liked to dance, but they didn't really like dancing as much as I did. Because I would be the person like, yo, I want to learn this new dance style. I want to learn this this new trick, this whatever it is that I could learn. And um, 
after a while, it, it, it definitely got to me because I, I would get so much outside attention, you know, people were like, yo, you're, you're an amazing dancer, you're great, and whatever, whatever. But um, one of the biggest thing was I felt like I didn't have, I didn't have as much support as I got older. Like, you know how your parents will support you as a child, they see like, hey, like, this is cool, this is cute, whatever. But as I, I, um, I was very mature at a, at a young age, so I had, I had a lot of understanding, you know, and I understood at the time, like, hey, like, this is what I really love and I want to pursue it. And I would try to make it to whatever I could, like, whatever show or um, whatever dance event or class, if I could. Um, but I didn't, I didn't feel like there was as much support. Okay. Because, yeah, like, nobody, nobody, nobody made it. Um, I'm trying to find the word. I just, I just like every show that I would do. Most of the time, mm -hmm. it was just me. Like I pull up to the show, nobody, nobody really came to see me perform before. Like, wow, so all of these, and kind of still up to this day, honestly. I mean, I have a, a people have been to like one or two shows, but it, it kind of, you know, for me, kind of doesn't make up for all of these years, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, I, as a result of that. Now I have like outside family, which are like fellow dancers, you know, because they they could relate to to, to me. Like they didn't have as much support, you know, because it's 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 amazing that you know when your parents or or family or whoever could support you and say like, yeah, hey, I support what you do, you know, continue doing it. But actually being there matters a lot. Mm -hmm. So, so for me, definitely that was that was that was the biggest the biggest challenge. And then when I got to a certain point, I had to really use dance to really you know, boost, boost my self-esteem even more and to get me out of whatever funk I was, I was dealing with. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm, I'm not even a dancer and I, I feel, <laughs> I feel you there, man. And even uh, Shanika, I definitely understand. So let's talk about the successes now because it, it has not been all bad, but I want to just pull up a picture. All right. So tell me what's going on here, Shanika. All right. So could you see the picture? Uh, no. Oh, you can't see it. All right, one second. All right, so essentially, there's you dancing with Black Hero. All right, I'm not sure why it's not coming up, but um, yeah. So take me through some of the successes, and definitely, I think one of them you represented uh, Grenada in Dubai, uh, but you've also been in a music video with one of the top, um, well, the rising uh, reggae stars. Speak to us about that. Um. I've been in many videos actually. Oh well, sorry. Uh, that's that's fine. <laughs> um, but for me, those aren't my most important moments. Then tell me. So yes, I've been to Dubai, and yes, I I'm in Scotland. Well, I'm in Jamaica now, but I'm based in Scotland. Um, I've been a part of different films and stuff like that but it's the moment when you are comfortable doing what you're doing that tiredness is not an option like you're tired and then well, it's just a part of the grind and you're willing to do that and you're willing to put aside everything for that yeah that is the moment that is, that's my success moments so some people may say, oh, you're in a video. Oh, I see you there. I see you in this. Nah. It's the moments where I, I'm willing to show up again after I get my butt kicked in class or, you know, I messed mm. up. It's the moment I show up again. Wow. That's a different perspective. Hmm. Right. That's but, <laughs> um, yes, I've done the black hero thing. I mean, some people say that I'm too humble. It was a good experience, but there's always something to learn or take on. So it, it happened, that video actually happened at the period where I was trying to, as the term say, pull myself out there. So I knew that, well, the pandemic had started. Dance in Jamaica didn't quite shut down, but it was slower than normal. I was preparing to do my master's. So it came at the right time of, putting myself out there. I also started to create personal content for, for my Instagram and my Facebook and stuff like that. And then 
like sometimes when I talk about my life, I think it's it's all so strange how things happen. But the Dubai thing lined up simultaneously and then the Scotland thing lined up and then just everything happened to line up, which is why I believe, you know, we're where we need to be when we need to be there as much as we may not enjoy those moments. Mm. Okay. Wendell, from your perspective. All right. So first off, let me just kick it off because I think um, one of the defining moments, um, and that's just from my perspective, okay, because that's what I'm seeing. And But the Janet Jackson appearance on, on that video, right? <laughs> that really, really let people know, yo, this, this guy is, is on his game. But tell me, what are some of the successes that you could consider, you know, as part of your career? Um, so the thing about uh, with the Janet Jackson job, that was definitely a blessing, of course. Um, but like Shanika, I've done many, many, many videos. Like, yeah, <laughs> I've done many videos. And honestly, that that my goal was never to to dance for artists i just wanted to become a dancer so i just wanted to take in whatever it is i could get so I, it was for that job it was like a job it was a, it was a gig you know because I, i'm i'm not like her her main dancer it was just like yeah it was a, it was a video shoot i was able to make it at the time and it, like everything just lined up right and, but Definitely, that's that's when everybody started to, to recognize me, like, hey, like, Janet Jackson. But before that, like, I performed for the Prince of England, like, um, danced for Neo, like, just so many other artists. Um, but as I, as I got older and started to really, you know, think about my, my purpose as a, as, a, as a dancer, as an artist, um, it definitely, like, the best feeling was, was actually when I when I went back home, went back to Caribou. Okay. And I was I was um, able to actually you know go and, and, and inspire the kids a little bit, teach them. Oh I wasn't God. I wasn't there for that long, but definitely something that I'm always trying to do is go back and just give back. But be becoming becoming the person to them that I was looking for to help guide me in in, in, in this journey. Because like I said, like everything I did was just more on, on, on my own just you know looking for that guidance so now being being looked up to like hey like you know i want to learn this and I'm, it's just it's a little scary but it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's definitely it's, it's a blessing like i think just the feeling of that knowing that you have uh, people looking up to you like that mm -hmm. it's better than, than than doing any any music video any dance gig, honestly wow because it just living in that moment helped me really you know believe in myself even more and and understand like you know my purpose is way bigger than just you know dancing for for, for, for artists and or on stage on stage wow I, you know what i love about the two of you um just the mere fact that you're humble um and you're actually focused on what really matters and not what the hype is and i appreciate that um you know like i said in grenada and i think that that's that's what i love about grenada too as well um but my next question, and it's really for people who are actually looking to get into this industry, because like I said, we already know the challenges. We already know that people are directed into a particular career field, but there are some people who want to break away and do what they love. So if you want to do TikTok, you want to do YouTube videos, if you want to be a dancer, just the non-traditional careers. Um, what are some of the advice, especially for someone wanting to get into the dance industry, could you provide for them so that you could steer them in the right direction? Um, it's open to Shanika, you want to take this one? <laughs> um, I'd say be a sponge. Soak up everything. Soak up? Okay. Yeah. Everything that you can. Make yourself as malleable as you can. And honestly, the limit is your mind. So as wow. far as you can think it, is as far as you can go. Appreciate it. Mm. Wendell, how about you? I, I, I couldn't have said that better. Oh, okay. <laughs> Definitely, you know, um, yeah, you have to be a sponge. Because in, in it, not in just one way, just in so many ways, you know, in, in, in even with the challenges that you do with as well, because you know you're going to go from that challenge as well. Mm. Um, 
again, uphold your value. Don't let anybody tell you what your value is, you know? Because that's that's one of the biggest things, especially as an artist. Just because people don't live that lifestyle, they don't fully understand it. Mm-hmm. And they try to discourage you in so many ways based on their own insecurities or you know what they don't simply don't know. So as long as you know you're working hard and you're 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 doing the necessary, you're taking necessary steps to in, in, in you know educating yourself about what it is that you want to do within dance or art. Um you know, continue to build yourself and uphold your values. Uphold your values. All right, good. All right, you hear that in the comment section? All right, values is important. Don't sell your soul. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, I, I definitely agree. I would really like to take the opportunity to say hello and welcome to um, our viewers um, and in, in the comment section. Uh, we appreciate you. This is Let's Have a Conversation. And we have uh, King Kayak and Shanika Gibbs here. They're both international dancers and we're discussing the dance industry in a segment I like to call For the Love of Dance. Um, Shanika, I know you also had a foundation where you, that you set up or a dance okay. training. I, sorry, um, well, yes. Tell, I like that you're speaking me. that into being. That's okay. No. <laughs> um, I like yes, to see it. I've, I've coined the workshops mm-hmm. that I come home and do by that name. And it seems to be growing because everybody's capitalizing on it. Yeah. And I first started out as a personal venture um, on the, the assistance of Miss Cecilia Griffith. But eventually, like I said, things just have put, started to line up. So the ministry came on board and they endorsed that. And now we're in conversations about even expanding that to bringing in not only myself for the workshops, but an international person as well. Mm, interesting. Okay. Um, I know with the advent of social media, right, and, and King Kak, I've, I've seen you on media, you know, very often posting and, and, and different gigs and, and, and so forth. With social media, um, I really like to get an idea. So how do you use it to really um, not only monetize, but also promote yourself, right? Um, and how effective that is for you? Um, well... With social media, uh, uh, a lot of my social media, I guess, I won't say, I won't say stardom, but the, just the popularity. A lot of it, I think, happened by accident because, um, well, not by accident. Well, uh, more more like the viral stuff, I think, by accident because I never, I would all if you if you if you had my old Facebook, I, from the moment I had a phone in my hand or or a camera, I would just record myself on post. Okay, and. As Instagram got bigger and I, and, I, and I joined it, it was kind of the same thing as well until one or two videos went viral and I was like, wait, is this really happening right now? And um, so now I, I use it to promote. I use it to, I, I definitely use it to market myself a lot more to, um, to meet new people because it helps a lot with that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely specific about what i post or how i post because with social media that's that's whatever what you're most consistently posting that's what the people kind of see you as as well so depending on what it is you are trying to trying to push out there um you have to have some sort of consistency with that mm. okay what about you um Shinika? how do you use um, your social media or are you too busy with your pursuing a doctorate wow <laughs> Oh, no, actually, um, I think Wendell is more of a commercial dancer than I am. Okay. Yeah. So, um, for that reason, he would rely on social media. However, I'm trying to be the whole package here. Ah, tell me. So I am trying to find a balance with how I put out content or use my social media. So of lately, you, uh, I would post more. So before I didn't post much, but now that things seem to be like building and building rapidly, I'd post so that people people know, somebody could see and even just be inspired. Um, as Wendell said, you are your brand. You know, some people, a doctor picked up his stethoscope to go to work. We legit wear our body and we go to work. So we are a brand and we are a tool. So whatever we put out is what the universe or what social media sees. So already, I mean, the opportunities for social media is endless. It's just about where you place yourself, right place, right time, right dynamic. 
but at the same time you know that there's a risk with that but your preparation should help your process and avoid all of those moments preparation will help your process all right i'm right. taking notes sir. Eh? Yeah. notes eh? yeah <laughs> I don't take notes. So, all right. I, while I'm at, with with you answering, um, I know you just you know came out from Dubai. I, I want to know about the experience because I see you dancing on stage with Dash, and um, yeah, give, what was that experience like for you? Um, this actually was my first tour representing Grenada. First of all, first of all, okay. Uh -huh. I've never danced. I mean. When I, I, I'm in a company in Jamaica, when I dance, yes, I'm Grenadian, but the company is Jamaican. So it, it, I was filled with pride some, somewhat to know that I am doing my country proud in Dubai. It's Dubai. Mm. Yeah. Um, the expo was a beautiful experience. I'm probably not the best descriptive person to say, um, to give a description, but I'd do it again for longer and hope that we could see, I wish we got to see the other countries and the cultures that they brought. So the experience was most so showing our identity 473, that's what it was. Yeah. If, I mean, the only thing I'd say from that experience that I hoped for is like an exchange to know, okay, this is how dance is in Dubai or this is how dancers are in this particular setting but i mean it's dubai still it's mind dubai. blown. yeah yeah i mean i think um i was rooming with ashley big up ashley and liana and kimmy wherever they are yeah um and it was two nights and we sat to each other and we're like wait but we in dubai <laughs> like it finally sunk in that we're doing what we love in a wow. place that most people dream to go Crazy. That's, that's inspiration. Wendell, let me hear. Uh, see you put up your hand, Wendell. Oh, no, no, no. She, she said that people dream to go and say me. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I want to know. I know. Is it the belly dance? I think is, is popular. I don't know. I, I, I'm Shanika. You, you get to figure out what, what are the popular dances they, they like across it. Um, we, we saw a show with some belly dancing and fire dancing. Fire dancing. Yeah. That's what Yeah. One. So that, that was interesting to take in. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw you on top of the camel too, so don't, don't I, I'm, I'm, I'm in news, so <laughs> I see everything. Okay. <laughs> Wendell, I know that you went to LA, right? And and you did your thing as well. So you, tra and you've also traveled to, to the UK, you know, just tell me about the most memorable experience you've had touring and dancing. Hmm. Well, you had to think about Iron Boy? Yeah. So <laughs> after this, before, before the pandemic, that's when I, I, I really like first started getting out there um, touring, uh, teaching dance. Okay. So um, so I haven't done UK yet, but I've only done um, I've done Europe and Asia. Oh, sorry. Some places. But man, honestly, I'm I'm whenever I get to these places and I'm teaching the classes, that it, it's so mind blowing because okay. like knowing that 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 dance has done all of this for me you know mm. thankfully thankfully I, I knew a little bit of french and spanish when i used to study in school helped me get uh, that helped me get to france and and spain and these other countries so what about russia I think russia, yeah i did russia but i only i didn't learn as much russian but i did russian. like a week but honestly I'm I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a grenadian i can't take the cold i don't mind I, i'm used to it a little bit but uh <laughs> place, I'm like, ah, I don't know. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Look, I look, I'll be honest, I can't take cool either. I remember coming out from Gatwick Airport and I was asking because I was I believe I was outside and I was asking, well, who turned up who turned up the AC? <laughs> I do I, I couldn't believe that I'm outside because what, what happened there's this you know big um overarching um you know roof. But I was outside, you know, so I, I still thought that I was inside the airport. You know, I couldn't believe outside was that. Cool. But anyway, um, in terms of the food uh, in Dubai, I, I'm sure you sample a little bit of that. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, the food was good. We had some good curry. Uh, we had some good seafood. Food was, I mean, it was hectic to eat when we had shows because one day we had like three shows back to back. And that's some of the shows were an hour long. So okay, eating well 
wasn't necessarily always there. But when we did get to eat, we we ate. We did. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good. All right. You, and Wendell, um, maybe I don't think that you would be affected by that. But I know for women, um, there is this stereotypical image that you have of a dancer. Um, and, and I know for you, you as, as you mentioned that you had that challenge that you, you know, your body type, you know, there were some issues there. Um, what I want to know is, do you have to be on a strict diet to keep a certain weight? Like, what, what's that process like? Um, and Shinika as well, you, you will chime in as well. Well, well, when I did, when I did do a little bit of theater dance, I just noticed that a lot of the dancers were, were more tall. That okay. If you do theater dance as a, as a man, kind of get you get it's easy for you to get to get chosen for certain things because in theater dance it's mainly ladies. Um, but uh, as far as diet, definitely yes, you have to you have to keep. I mean, depending on you, honestly, for your personal brand, because I have friends that are like twice my size doing flips, and that's 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 their thing. They they're professional dancers as well. Um, for me, I definitely. I, I always like to like to stay fit because I do a lot of physical work as far as the gymnastic stuff that I do, the tricks and everything. Um, thankfully, I've been doing it for so many years. I haven't had an injury, um, knock on wood. But um, <laughs> definitely, I try to I try to keep keep a you know I have my cheat days sometimes, but I definitely I try to stay fit. I don't I don't lift any I don't lift too much weights. I do more calisthenics, and um, honestly, the the amount of dancing I do. The food just the food just disappears honestly yep oh boy honestly i eat real calories and stuff should he go over with you um you know um i can just piggyback on everything he says mm. um it's all about your brand one um you are your tool so keeping yourself in good physical health is better i mean i know me personally i mm, I know when I'm on my body than when I'm not. And it's just for the aesthetic, like I say, it just looks better visually. It looks better on a stage. So we just have to work to always look better. Eating, I don't think I have the best eating habits. Hmm. Um, I really don't. I don't eat like a regular human being. I always tell people that. Well, well tell us what Sometimes, you like to eat like. <laughs> uh, no, no. Like, and it's not that I eat much, you know just sometimes the days just go by and at nine and ten is when i'm taking my first meal See, that's oh, yes, oh no that no that's not good enough no no no, no. Right. but <laughs> it comes with the job description i'm not saying it's the best way but yeah but you yep. know when you do eat you eat and you, you eat well eat well okay <laughs> oh, like for real because i'm, I'm pretty sure Shanika, i know you can relate like there's times when like you're so busy and you, you 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 forget that you didn't eat for the whole day. Yeah, honestly speaking, mm. that's me on every Saturday in Jamaica. In Jamaica, hmm. yeah, with all that jerk chicken and <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, just just um, what's required on a Saturday from me doesn't necessarily allow eating mm, at a particular time. I understand. Yeah, I understand. I think the only time you'll get to eat is if you actually give yourself like an earlier time, maybe, yeah. and that's like. You need that early time to rest. <laughs> right. Like you're so tired most times, you know. Yeah. Yes. Mm. All right. Um, in the comment section, uh, big up to Karakou and PD Martinique. Um, I see you representing in the comment section. Appreciate it. Also, I'd like to recognize the other dancers uh, that accompanied you, uh, Shanika. Uh, I see one of them, um, uh, Miss uh, Jerome, um, Ashley Jerome. Um, she's on the live as well. So i like to big them up. Um, they did very well. Um, yeah, 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 man. Yeah, man. Um, we, we we really represented and uh, when i say we i i wasn't included but <laughs> you know they represented us grenada <laughs> you know we love you we appreciate we appreciate you so um as we look to you know some of this conversation um we're speaking about the dance industry um for the love of dance um definitely i would like to know what can we expect from the two of you going forward that one might be you know you got to think about that one you know you know <laughs> What can we expect? All right, starting off with you, Shanika, you're doing your master's or your doctorate? Is it master's? I'm doing my master's in dance oh, science and education. Master's. Sorry, my bad. My apologies. So you're doing your master's, yes. So, yeah, I mean, you're pushing the bar. Tell me, how far are you um, going? 
honestly, the master's and even the doctorate is just for security. Security down the line where, you know, the bones don't work like they they used to. Used yeah, yeah, to. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Smart. That's smart. But the ultimate goal is to dance, to perform. Um, whether it be a even bigger professional company or as far as a Broadway show, there's mm-hmm. that. I as I as I say to people, I want to dance out my youth until I can't dance anymore. But mm. being cognizant of the realities that we live in and the life that we live in where dance is concerned, I am trying to balance having that stability while doing what I love. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay. What about you, um, King? Well, <clears throat> I would say since since the whole pandemic started, I, I started digging a little bit deeper into just learning a lot more about business and everything like that. So um, definitely a lot, a lot more dancing, yes. But I kind of, I, mean, I didn't switch completely. I just feel like I, I, I can, you know, my abilities are limitless. So I'm preparing myself now to, to start my very own dance company. Um, but aside from that, I'm also, I'm a recording artist now. I engineer my own music. I write my own music. So of course, dance and music goes hand in hand. So I'm, I'm definitely going, going the artist route, but I don't want that to alone to define me. I just want to just live my life. I want to live it. I want to be a full fledged artist and, um, yeah, definitely. You're gonna expect a lot of a lot of music, a lot of uh, visuals because I I started dabbling a bit in in directing, okay. and so I, I I did my very first music video last September. I choreographed it myself. I cast myself. I directed myself. Um, yeah. So I'm. <laughs> You're one man army. <laughs> yes, but I finally oh. finally have have my my very own team. Right. So now I can focus on becoming an artist, but I don't have I don't want to just give up dance. So I still teach. I still teach and then when, once I once I have the, the company together, I definitely want to be able to, you know, um influence these younger dancers as well and give them opportunities, give them all the dance opportunities that you know okay. that they feel like it's unattainable or whatever it is. But yeah. Yeah. I appreciate the fact that you both want to actually give back to Grenada as well. Um I believe that's that's really commendable. Um, also, I wanted to ask though. You mentioned the business um, and the business of dance. Um, sometimes I think even with athletes, professional athletes, and so on, you know, they get big checks, six-figure checks, whatever. Um, but they forget about the business because business comes first. Um, I would just like to get a quick perspective from the two of you um, about the business of dance and um, you know what's it like. Like you have a manager, you like what what is it like? Just a quick run through. Shanika, you wanna yeah. everybody friend? Wait, wait, sorry, wait, wait. Yeah. Okay, so the business, all right. So I know you have to have a manager. Just educate me now on the business of dance, all right? Because yeah. Um most times certain opportunities come through an agency. Um, if not an agency, but uh probably somebody producing whatever you're being involved in. Um, it's best to have a manager. They help guide in terms of financial things. So for stuff, most of the stuff that I do in Jamaica, um, the artistic director of the company would handle all those managerial things. For stuff that I do in Grenada, I'd say my momager <laughs> manages that. Wow, okay. Um, I, I was explaining that to some students um, I was teaching in one day, and most people don't know this, you could po- possibly make, just for one performance, you could possibly make somebody's salary for a month from one gig. And I don't think people understand that. Yes, it may not be, you know, the gigs may not be frequent, 
but they're there and they exist. You can legit make somebody's salary for one wow. performance. For one performance. Mm. Yeah. Okay. King Kayak, um, you mentioned about a business. Um, I see you're building a team around, and you also have a clothing line, King Kayak. Am I correct? Or yeah, I, you don't I, want to... I, started, I started a clothing line, but before I get into that, if, if okay, yeah. Thinking, um, yes, like you can literally make somebody's salary in one day or in a matter of a few, a few hours. And but the, the, the good thing is, once you know a bit of the business, then it can help you at least get residual income but de depending on what it is you do right like if you're a choreographer so you can get like residual income off of that based on what kind of deal you do um as far as dan's business um i mean i i do have i i have an agent i have, I have two agents but definitely i would say a, a manager is better because a manager is more hands-on they make sure they get the stuff done uh, a agencies usually just like present present the opportunity to you and then it's up to you if you like if you want to go try to attempt to get it um but it's, it's important to know to know business and dance because so many so many things can can slip through the cracks and mm -hmm. you just certain situations where like you're undervalued you're underpaid you're um yeah you're, you're taking advantage of um so that that le just learning learning just the basic you know, like understanding how to how to how to read contracts, and um, I think every everything you do should have a contract. Everything. You do. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Because I learned I learned the hard way many times. Really? Yeah. How hard? How hard are we talking about? Like just when, when you when you make, when you when you when you talk to people and you make decisions, you know, based based off off of the, the word from each other, and the people kind of go back on their word, whether it's um, paying you. Whether it's the amount of money they're supposed to pay you or the, the amount of work that, that that you said like hey i'm willing to do this i'm not willing to do this contracts would just help you in so many so many ways so many ways yes. mm. all right okay um i appreciate guys um and we're you know we're at the hour now where we're looking to wrap up and just sum up this conversation um i would like to also take in the comment section i would welcome you know the other dancers to part two of for the love of dance um so if you have any dancers in the comment section just drop a like drop a heart anything just drop it in the comments if you're interested to come on this platform this platform was created for us to showcase young people um that's why it's so youthful i want the show to be youthful but we also want to be discussing serious topics that affect us and conversations that matter for us Okay, um, I also want to take the opportunity to inform you guys that we also have another show, which is a, a few good men. And we're definitely going to use that platform to discuss men's issues um, and thoroughly. All right. So um, look out for that. Um, we're expected to move from Sunday to Tuesdays um, starting in February. All right. So just to inform you guys. So Shanika, King Kayak, um, I just really love to get um, an idea as to what we can expect from you when it reg with regards to Grenada. Um, when do you plan to come back? You know, what do you plan to do? Just, just give it a, yeah, give it a rundown. <laughs> uh, Wendell can go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so I recently went back in December. I mean, I went, I went to see family, so I didn't get to stay as long, but as soon as I touched down, I was like, you know what? I need to get back in Grenada like at least two or three times a year. Because there's there is definitely more that I want to do, but I know I have to actually be, I have to physically be there. So um definitely um some workshops. But I def I'm working on a lot of different things. A lot of different things. I know. I, I you know ultimately I, I want to provide more for these. You know, I I want them to know like you have you have you have an ally as far as in having a limitless mind you know as far as, as far as what it is you want to do whatever makes you happy so um yes it'll be a lot of dancing a lot of you know, uh, more classes and everything but i'm definitely trying to go bigger and provide more so um i'm definitely gonna gonna pull up with a with, with a, a squad <laughs> hopefully hopefully she needs to be there at yeah no, no, Robin. Hopefully, uh, you know the times the, the, the times work out. But um, yeah, definitely want, want to to just help the youth grow as much as I can. And definitely, I want to 
collaborate more with uh, the young people. And I'm still young, I ain't that old yet. But the, the, people, the young people like, like uh, uh, Shanika and the other dancers as well, and just empower them and let them know like, hey, you have, you have a resource, you have um, somebody that believes in you, you have, you know. Yeah, okay. Quick question though, uh, very quickly. Um, you started listening to music on what? Um, on cassette, on vinyl, or on DVD? Uh, not mm -hmm. DVD, but CD, yeah, you. <laughs> on CD. On CD? Yeah. Well, right, so I, I guess your age, I guess your age, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I guess your age right there, okay. I think, well, we still had Walkman, but I mean, I mean the, walk, the last Walkman I saw was maybe like five or six years ago. Ah, yeah. All right, cool, cool. Shanika, um, what about you? What can we expect from you in Grenada? Um, just like Wendell, um, I don't shy away from opportunities to teach a workshop. I like to give back, like I said in the beginning, the workshops have now moved from just solely being me, but utilizing the people um, I would have met along the way. Um, I started a company in Grenada two years ago called One Unit with Leanna Joseph and Camira Phillips. And basically the company is just centered around bringing together dance in Grenada and dancers um, like I said before too, I never really had that sort of support. So if I can be even the toe print or the footprint in the path for a young person to know that they have help, it's help. not easy, you know, Absolutely. like, or to know that they have somebody that they can relate to. Everything I didn't have, I hope that I could be that for somebody in Grenada. Wow especially when it comes to dance. Because sadly, it's so undervalued, but it's so beautiful. It's so intoxicating. It's so mesmerizing. Um, I have bigger plans when, you know, the bones don't work like they <laughs> used to anymore. But nothing before it's time. Just know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> So quick question. So when you started listening to music, uh, what what started listening to listen to music on? Uh, me. Yeah. I think CD? it was a a Walkman. Yeah, a CD. A Walkman CD. Yeah. Uh, oh, a this man. <laughs> a this one. Oh, this uh, a this one. Yeah, yeah, right. You, crazy, right? Um. So guys, watch. I really appreciate it. Um. You guys were wonderful, open, frank. You know, just honest, sincere. You know, I, and the list goes on. Um, thank you for coming on this platform, and I'll definitely be following you guys and 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 your career. You know, I've, you know, I'm from day one. Well, not day one, but you know, from from long. I've done stories on King Kayak. You remember that, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I've, I've done three, four stories on you, um, Shanika. What? That, that's like what third or yeah, the third. Yeah, you know, I, I, that's what I like to do. This is what this is where my passion is. Where I can create a platform for young people to showcase. Um, who they are and and what makes them happy because I'm, I'm fed up with us just going along with with other people's expectations for us you know if your passion is to draw go hard do the business but pursue your passion and, and that's my advice so any last words I'm um, Shanika um, King Kayak as we look to wrap up um, I see somebody actually said it in the in the comment section what did what what if if, if you do what you love you're not gonna work a day in your life. Oh, all right, hold on, hold on. Let me pull it up. Boop, 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 boop. Godson. All right, Nas. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that, and um, I have this saying that I that I came up with just before leaving Grenada: Don't lose yourself in the journey. So you may shoot for the stars, and you may get to the stars, but you can't forget who you are, where you're coming from, and your why. And your why. That's right. Yeah. King Kayak. Any any last words from you, bro? Mm. Mm. Well, first, th thank you for thank you for for, for the opportunity. Um, I ha and also, you know, I haven't gotten the chance to connect with Shanika in a long time. Too, you know, we live in our lives and doing so much. So it's been a pleasure to reconnect with the both of you. And um, yeah, what Shanika said, that was powerful. And, yeah, <laughs> cannot do that. Eh? <laughs>
Yo. You know, um, this, this is this is a beautiful panel, and I, I hope that it, it, it continues, and I hope wow. that um, more young people can get get involved, and you know, just continue building, building, building dance, building art, for you know what I mean? building wow. themselves as well. Wow. Wow, we get a lot of love here, bro. Um, um, this, well, first of all, Miss Jerome says um, this interview was refreshing. I thank you so much. Appreciate. Um, and guys, that's kudos to y'all. Y'all make this program what it is, not me. Um, and definitely, I hope to. I would love to send out an invite to anyone from Conception Dance to come on this program to let's chit chat about dance. Um, quickly again, I see uh, Miss Noel here. She says that I'll sleep great tonight after this interview. Appreciate you, uh, Miss Noel. Love you. And then Godson, finally. Godson. Nas. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, I live that every day. As a music teacher and performer, I'm really inspired by you guys. More example for my students. You hear that? No. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't really do that much. Sorry. So I'm, I'm not that good. But anyway, guys. Wonderful. In the comment section, we appreciate. Thank you so much for, for being loyal and tuning in. You could have gone anywhere on a Friday night, but you chose to come and watch this live. Appreciate you. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep keep this program running. Um, it's my passion as well. I don't get paid for it, but I love it. Okay? So, guys, have a good night. Appreciate, and we keep in touch, all right? Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. All right. Have a Blessings, guys. <laughs>